Good morning student myself professor Gada Kesses from SND College of Engineering and Research Center Eula student we are learning the final year subject that is a solar and wind energy from that subject we are learning some topics from unit number 4 so that is nothing but case study on the solar energy application as we have discussed up to the last lecture we have to study the three case studies in the unit number 4 First case study is related to the solar food dryer. Second case study is related to the parabolic dish solar cooker. And third case study is related to the photovoltaic system. That means what? We have to learn how that all the system are using the solar energy to dry the foods. All of you understand? That is nothing but the solar dryer. So out of that first case study we have started up to the last lecture and we have seen some topics from the first case study that's are all basic topics related to the first case study that's are basics of solar dryers basic principle of solar dryer uses of solar dryer then we have seen the types of solar dryers three types main types we have seen natural convection solar dryer force convection solar dryer and tunnel solar dryer then also we have seen applications of solar dryer advantages disadvantages and limitations also we have seen related to the solar dryer that means we have up to the last lecture we have covered all the basic points related to the solar food drive now in the today's lecture we are going to see how actually the solar energy is used in the drying the foods or how that energy is used in drying the foods of the different types so here i have shown one picture where you will able to see there will be the drying of the some foods okay that food will be dried in this solar dryer with the help of that solar dryer and that solar dryer will using the energy of the solar system all of you understand so i am going to show you one video related to that solar dryer system so you will understand easily how that solar dryer system will work and how the application of solar dryer system is there so actual case study you will understand from the video <music> days it will turn into this and I don't think any one of you would be interested in having this and this is what exactly happens with a significant amount of our produce now if you don't want this to happen with your produce or with anyone's produce there are two things that you can do for that first is the Indian parent formula do what our Indian parents usually tell us that eat it before it get rotten khalo ni to ho ju but that's not a practical solution because sometimes you may not be having appetite for that or sometimes you may be having pizza or burger in front of you then who is going to look at fruits the second thing that we can do for this is a sort of magical thing it's preservation by definition the activity or the process of keeping something valued alive or free for, from damage or decay is preservation simply we are converting the perishable stuff into the preserved stuff now preserved stuff is something which is having a longer shelf life. There are a lot of ways for preservation and one of the world famous technique for preservation is drying. So drying is the process in which we remove moisture. Now it aims at inhibiting the growth of bacteria, yeasts and molds through the removal of water. Simple politics. You are not providing them water, they will not be able to survive. So now some of you may be wondering, okay, we are humans. This is the trying process but how does these two came together so for those history loving people here is the story of the solar dryers about 12,000 years ago birth of agriculture took place humans started establishing permanent civilizations they started cultivating land and they were not producing enough for their survival but the problem now was not the production of the food but the preservation of the food because they were producing only for a limited period of time it was restricted to a particular season for rest of the year they have to wander in the forest and find out their food so for that they started experimenting with their food and from here the process of preservation it developed 
people started salting their food they started drying it smoking it started storing up it in fats and syrups ancient greek people they were very famous at this and through these processes people evolved the process of drying they did a lot of experimentations on drying and different techniques for drying evolved nowadays we are having different techniques for drying oven drying sun drying solar drying dehydrator microwave drying air drying a lot of techniques are there but the two most famous are the solar drying and the sun drying and this is because at that time and even still some people had the perspective that sun is a god surya dev he is going to kill all the evils which are present inside your food and your food would be preserved so some people took it scientifically as well so this scientific and religious perspective it was uh, taken into account and a lot of experimentation was done which lead to the development of different types of solar dryers which we will be studying in this presentation rest is the future which i can predict but various business industries and agro industries claim that solar dryers are having a very healthy future now this was all about the history of the solar dryers now what about geometry this is the representation of a solar dryer so in this you will put your apples and here is your sun sun rays will be falling on the solar dryer and it is going to do something magical inside the solar dryer and it will be converted into a dried stuff so basically solar dryers are using the solar energy to dry up the substance now this seems to be a magical thing but do you know that every magic is having certain rules certain principles which have to be followed so this magic is also having some principle which you have to follow every time these are first is the high temperature now high temperature would be maintained by the sun when the sun rays would be falling on the solar dryer it will heat it up and high temperature would be attained second is the less relative humidity now wherever we are using this term relative we are actually comparing between two things here the comparison is done between the internal environment of the solar dryer and the internal environment of the fruit you know there is a law of nature nature loves balance so everything from its higher concentration will move toward the lower concentration if the moisture inside this fruit is higher than the moisture inside this internal environment of the solar dryer then the moisture from the fruit will be driven out to this internal environment and in this way your fruit will dry up for this you have to maintain a less relative humid environment for this drying chamber the humidity inside this drying box should always be less than that of the fruit so this is what we call the less relative humidity a simple thing but how exactly you are going to do that to satisfy these two condition we will construct the solar dryers in such a way so on the basis of construction we divide solar dryers in three categories first the uh, direct solar dryer then the indirect solar dryer and the mixed mode solar dryer so we will talk about these three one by one first the direct solar dryer so this is a direct sort of dryer it is going to talk to the sun directly it doesn't allow anyone to interrupt in between their conversation so this is the construction of a direct solar dryer you would be having a frame now this frame from internal side it will be painted with a black paint because black is a good absorbent of heat and on the outer side it is having insulation so that the heat from here may not get lost to the external environment inside this you are going to put your apples and above this we are having a glass slab if you notice there are two holes over here one is for the inlet of the cold air and second is the exit point of the hot air from here the cold air will enter inside the solar dryer and from here the hot air will be expelled out so now let's talk about its working so here are our fruits here is our sun sun rays will be falling on the glass slab some of these rays will be reflected back but some rays will enter inside the glass slab these rays are going to heat up the environment inside this glass slab the hot air which is present inside this dryer it is going to vaporize the moisture which is present inside this fruits the moisture will be driven out of the fruits and it will be accumulating in this environment of the solar dryer from here the hot air being lighter in weight it will rise up and will be expelled out through this hot air exit point with the expulsion of the hot air the vapors which had accumulated over here will also be expelling out of this box so this is the actual moment the cold air will be entering from this point when it will enter it will be heated up by the sun rays and the hot air will vaporize the moisture which is present inside these fruits 
that hot air with vapors will be expelled out from this point. So this is the working of a direct solar dryer. Now let's get back to the principle. We talked about two conditions. First was the high temperature. Now the high temperature is maintained by the sun. And next was the less relative humidity. And this thing is maintained by the continuous inflow of the cold air and outflow of the hot air. Now what is actually happening when the moisture is accumulated over here? It is constantly being driven out with the expulsion of the hot air. And in this way, the less humid environment will be maintained. And we are satisfying these two conditions, so our magic will continue. Okay, now there were some shortcomings of this direct solar dryer. First is that it is of very small capacity. You can't put your 200 kg of produce at once in your solar dryer. That's not possible for it. Second thing, it leads to the discoloration of the crop. So let's take the example of the current season fruit, mango. If you put this mango slice inside your direct solar dryer, it will turn into this total discoloration of your mango slice. Do you know Japanese people, they eat with their eyes. Actually, the fact is they are firstly going to look at the food. If that seems visually attractive to them, only and only then they will be consuming it. The same law applies to market as well. When you are going to take your produce to the market for selling it, if the customer is attracted to your produce visually, only and only then he or she would be buying it. But if your crop is totally discolored, so you may not be able to fetch higher prices for that. This was the major shortcoming of these direct solar tires. But we are humans and we are having a tendency that wherever we see shortcomings, we try to evolve new versions of that. As we evolve new version of WhatsApp, new versions of iPhone, similarly we have the new version of this direct solar dryer. Now what exactly is happening in this direct solar dryer? That here, the sun rays are in direct contact of the fruit. So we have to develop something which is not having this direct contact of the sunlight and the fruits. And for this, we have the indirect solar dryer. Now this indirect solar dryer is a shy guy. He's not going to talk to sun directly. He always need a messenger for that. So he had appointed a solar collector for this purpose. So here you can see the indirect solar dryer. This is the solar collector. So whatever sun rays are trying to communicate with the drying box, it will be communicating it to the drying box. The sun rays will be falling on the drying box as well, but they won't be having any effect over here. Okay, so here the sun rays are falling on the glass wall. From the lower side, it is heat insulated so that the heat may not get lost. This is connected to the drying box. Inside the drying box, you would be having a tray with perforations so that the air movement may not get restricted. It is also heat insulated. Please note here the heat insulation is done all the sides, even here also. That means if the sun rays are even falling over this side, they won't be having any effect on the produce which we are putting over here because it is totally heat insulated. From, uh, from lower side, it is having some metallic supports and we are having a chimney for the expulsion of the air, hot air. Now, let's talk about its working. So inside this, you are going to put your fruits on the tray. Here is your sun. Sun rays will be falling on the solar collector. The air inside the solar collector would get heat up. Here the color of the arrow symbolizes the temperature of the air. Blue color symbolizes cold air and red for the hot air. Now the hot air will enter inside the drying chamber. From here it will move up to the fruit section and it will heat up the area over there. Now the hot air is going to vaporize the moisture from the apples and the hot air and the vapors will be expelled out through this chimney. A simple sort of working. But you know, life is not that simple. There are always some complex perspective people. They are always taking one thing from here, one thing from there, and they are fusing that to form an even complex mixture. This is what actually happened with the mixed mode solar dryer. Some people took one thing from the indirect and one thing from the direct solar dryer, and its mixture is what we call a mixed mode solar dryer. So this is the representation of a mixed mode solar dryer. Here, we are having a collector, solar collector, which is taken from the indirect solar dryer and a drying chamber, which is taken from the direct solar dryer. If you note that here, the drying chamber, it is made up of glass. So if the sun rays would be falling on this drying cha uh, chamber, they will surely have an effect on it. They will surely going to heat that. But if you uh, see in the indirect solar dryer, here if the sun rays would be falling on this side, then it, they won't be having any effect on this produce because it is totally heat insulated, but in the mixed mode, we are having this made up of glass. 
So what is happening? Here we put our fruits and here is your sun. The sun rays will be falling on the solar collector as well as on the drying chamber. The air which enters from the cold air inlet will be heated up and it will enter the drying chamber and heat up the total area over here. Now this heating effect is not only caused by the movement of the air from the solar collector but also due to the sun rays which are directly falling on the drying chamber. Now the air is again going to do the same thing. The hot air will vaporize the moisture and the moisture and the hot air will be expelled from the hot air exit. So, till now we had done the three types of solar dryers. Some of you may be wondering, okay, this one, this one, this one. But which one? Which one is best out of these three? Now for ranking them, we should have certain criteria or certain parameter. So here we are taking it as rate of drying. At what speed your solar dryer is drying up your substance. So on the basis of that, our winners are like this. So the mixed mode solar dryer, it is having a double heating effect. One from the air which is entering the solar collector and one from the sun rays which are directly falling on the drying chamber due to which it is having a higher rate of drying followed by the indirect and next the direct. Okay, so till now whatever we had done was a totally natural thing. Natural movement of wind was there, hot air will rise up naturally. But you know, wherever natural things persist, there come the scientists. Scientists are of such perspective that they will always try to mimic the natural things and convert some uh, convert it into a machinery and artificial thing over which they would be having control. So they thought, why we always have to depend on this natural movement of air? You know, like the cold air will enter, the hot air will exit. So much time consuming. Why can't we just induce a fan or a pump inside it, which will force the air inside the solar drive? So this is what they did they induce the fans or the pumps inside the solar dryer so that the air will enter forcefully, actively inside the solar dryer. So these type of solar dryers are called the active solar dryer. And those which are working on the natural movement of wind, the orthodox type of solar dryers, they are the passive solar dryers. Now you can see these diagrams. In passive solar dryer, we are having a chimney. So the cold air will enter and the hot air will be expelled through the chimney. But in the active solar dryers, we are having a fan over here. So this fan will be forcing the air from the outside to the inside of the solar chamber. Now, after this experiment, what scientists, they found out that the rate of drying of the active solar dryer was higher than that of the passive solar dryer. The reason being that in active solar dryer, we had added some fans and pumps. So they are increasing the rate of drying in that. Okay, so now let's talk about some good things in our solar dryer. Okay, so in the solar dryers, you're not using any sort of fuel. You are only using the solar energy. So you're not spending money on the fuel and therefore you are saving your money. You know, as Gujarati people say, Tamar bachat, tamar amdan se, whatever you are saving, it's also sort of income for you. And the second thing, that it is not generating any sort of pollution. So it is eco-friendly. So you're generating good health for everyone. And health and wealth, these are the two things which we actually need. Thirdly, we are not allowing our produce to get degraded in its quality, so you are saving it also. And it doesn't require much of maintenance, it totally depends upon your caring ability, how much effectively you are handling your solar dryers. But you know, as I told you earlier, that nature loves balance. So if there are some advantages, there must be some disadvantages as well. So let's talk about the disadvantages, okay. So you can use a solar dryer on a sunny day, but what about night? What about a cloudy or a rainy day? You can't use solar dryer on those days. Secondly, it is very much time consuming. If you use an electrical dryer, it will dry at a much faster rate. And thirdly, it is having a very high initial investment. Now from this term, initial investment, some of you must have gone into economics. So let's get completely into economics and find out the cost price of a solar dryer. So this cost price, it will actually depend on two things. First is the type of solar dryer. So if you're going for a mixed mode solar dryer where you are having double heating effect, you have to pay more for that. Uh, followed by the indirect, which is having a solar collector and followed by the direct, which is the simplest and the cheapest form. If you talk about the active and the passive, because in active you are adding some fans or pumps. So you're adding something extra in your device. It will cost you extra as well. So active are having much higher cost than that of passive. The second thing, 
on which the cost depends is loading capacity now loading capacity is the amount of your produce quantity of your produce your grains your fruits your vegetables which you can put inside your solar dryer at once in one batch so if you are taking for 50 kg capacity it will cost you about 30000 to 50000 for 100 kg capacity it's about 60000 to 80000 and if you want for a large industrial scale then it will cost you about 4 lakh to 10 lakh now after doing this cost and everything if someone of you still wants to buy a solar dryer and want to talk to a dealer for that then there are some things which you must keep in your mind for that some specifications of the solar dryer first thing that there are different solar dryers for different things here i had given specification of an onion solar dryer so there will be different solar dryers for different items if you are using uh, if you want for apple there would be different for vegetables there is different for food grains there would be different second thing that you need to keep in mind is loading capacity how much amount of produce you can put inside your solar dryer in one batch so here it is given as 100 kg per batch next is the moisture content so initial moisture is uh, the moisture in your produce when you are putting it inside your solar dryer and the final moisture is when you are taking out your food product what will be the moisture at that time next is the operating temperature it is the temperature at which your solar dryer would be working now if you are taking for fruits or vegetable please know that it must be between 60 to 70 degrees celsius if it is higher than 70 degrees celsius that may lead to the depletion of the nutritional value of your fruit next the source of heat so here it is given solar collector that means we uh, this is an indirect type of solar dryer if it's a, a simple a glass tub of a drying chamber then it's the direct one and if you are having both drying chamber with glass and the solar collector then it will be a mixed mode and the next is the duration here it is given 4 hours now this particular solar dryer is a force system here we had added some fans over here to force the air inside therefore its drying duration is less otherwise it will take much time uh, more than even 10 hours so you must keep these things in your mind now let's have a quick review of whatever we had done uh, our topic was solar dryer we did its principle three types of solar dryer on the basis of the construction the direct indirect and the mixed mode on the basis of movement of wind we did active and passive we did the construction the working the rate of drying advantages disadvantages costs and some specific terms so these are the references shukran